So I've had the KTM 890 Duke R for a few days now. It is very pretty, it is very fast, but what is it like to live with? So I suppose this is what we are now classing as a middleweight naked sports bike. Yeah, we're at that point where around 900 cc's is considered middleweight. Ignoring the semantics, it is actually quite a light bike and I guess the power output is closer to that of the kind of middle capacity sports bikes anyway. But that is a very long and probably quite boring conversation or argument to have. Middleweight, naked sports bikes obviously aren't made for touring. You can do it if you are willing, but it wouldn't be my choice in the same way that I don't wear stilettos to the gym. That's not the only reason I don't wear stilettos to the gym, but we'll leave that discussion for another day. The reason I wouldn't ride this longer distances is predominantly comfort and wind buffeting to your face and your body, trying to blow you over the back of the bike. Couple that with the lack of luggage, and on this one, no pillion seat either, because they know what this bike is all about. It's ready to race, and racing isn't done too up. You do race in solo, and you ride this bike solo. But let's get on to the meat and discuss a few crucial points. It all starts with the engine. This obviously an upgrade from the 790 Duke. And where that one makes, I think it was about 103 horsepower, this one makes 121. And it's got 73 foot-pounds of torque as well. Both those found just above 9,000, around 7,000 for the torque. 121 horsepower with a dry weight of 166 kilograms is not going to be slow. It pulls well from about 3,000 revs upwards, chases beyond seven up to about 9,000. It has six gears and those gears don't feel particularly short, so it'll give you a comfortable range to play with. I'm gonna take the puppy analogy that so many people like to level at it and make it a tiny bit more specific and say that it feels like a well-trained but giddy dog. In the sense that it is looking back at you, trying to read your signals, picking up on you, waiting for the moment you say go on and then it just woof, rushes off that'd be a problem if it was one of those dogs where you can fake throw in something and it just legs it which <laughs> in the wrong hands probably could be true of this with a bike that says ready to race it should be expected that it's going to goad you and tempt you into going maybe a little quicker than you should at times so you have to be the grown-up of the relationship and tell it no we're going to wait until it is appropriate and safe to do so or you can be a dickhead and just blast it around and scare yourself and other people. Completely your choice, you are a free agent. Again, the weight comes into play when we're talking about brakes, but the brakes on this, quite obviously, are very good. This is called an R for good reason. Is there an R down there? Where is the R? Oh no, there is, there it is, hide him. That's important, because people need to know that you've gone for the R and not the standard, because you are a connoisseur. 320 mil discs on the front that are whopping great. They look bigger than that, to be honest with you, because they take up most of that wheel, which is a bit of a problem if you're trying to get a chain through it, but otherwise, not a problem at all, because they stop it on a dime. I did hear from someone that it was maybe a little overpowered, potentially, maybe a little snappy, I guess, uh, but actually, I would say that there is great feel through that front brake. Four piston, radial mounted Brembo style emmers. And on the rear, we have a 240 mil disc and a single pot caliper, which of course you can set in supermoto mode and turn off so you can skid it like a boss. You've got a cable clutch as well, which I think I prefer over the hydraulic version and they are massively adjustable, these levers as well. So you really can dial that in for your own personal preference. Pretty light as well on the clutch. And obviously with this one, because it has the extras on it, it has a quick shifter as well. KTM call it the scalpel and it does conjure up I think the right kind of impression in your mind. It is sharp and it is precise. You can carve roads on the 890. Probably even more so on the 890 because it has slightly better suspension. Still WP but you've got full adjustability all over apart from preload on the front. And again from my impression if I remember back to the 790 this feels a little firmer I would say but it has been a while since I rode that. Ergonomically, it is comfortable enough. It is, as I mentioned, a relatively tall bike, and it does uh, find itself nestled neatly within your nethers, uh, which, if you're stopping in town, you'll start to notice, and it will start to impinge on blood flow to your legs. 
But even having said that, I can get both feet flat on the ground. I am wearing slightly taller boots today, but uh, just in case you're not aware, five foot 10, which is a perfectly average height and normal height for a grown man in his 30s. But that extra height actually helps a little bit with riding comfort because the leg position is relatively relaxed. Gives you a fair amount of leg room on there. Bars are also quite wide. That gives you some good purchase. They're also quite flat. And the body position is pretty neutral, pretty comfortable. As you can see, bars and hands, I am perfectly in alignment with plenty of leg room and I am comfortable. And I am quite close to that front. You can't really see an awful lot of the dash beneath you. Although I can see a cheeky little steering damper poking out through there as well. I'd say with a bike like this, where potentially you're gonna take it on a track and you are more than likely gonna be accelerating and braking very hard, it is quite a good thing to have that steering damper down there to make things just a little bit smoother and safer. The only thing I think I found uncomfortable or a little bit weird is the lever positions for your feet. They're actually quite tucked within the bike and the pegs sit out quite proud from the machine. So actually you've got to work your foot quite hard to get in and around them. I wonder, and I think it's probably highly likely whether or not you could adjust those and bring them out a little bit and change the position. Fingers crossed. Then we come on to the electronics, which has a few components to it. First of all, this is the spec'd up package that's, I think it's about 640, 650 extra, but you get a few different electronic bonuses with that package. Do I think it's cheeky that KTM get you to pay extra money to unlock hidden levels within the electronics of this bike? Maybe. Would I opt for it and would I buy it? Yeah, I probably would. So let's show you what your extra money gets you as far as electronic aids and little tweaks. Let's use this little puppy so you can see it say that it's ready to race. All right. Well, sometimes I'm not. Sometimes I'm just popping to the shops. Do I want to race to the shops? Not every single time. So we have a little menu system down here. Small side note, I actually do quite like the uh, switch gear on this. I think it feels relatively well made. So let's show you the favorites. We've got trips and data. We've got rider modes and we've got motorcycle. We're going to rider modes. We have sports, which I didn't really like on the road. It's maybe a little bit too snatchy. Street, which generally speaking is more than enough power for most situations. Rain just makes it a bit safer in the wet, obviously. And then you've got track. So if you go into track, you have throttle response. You can turn that way up so that it is essentially just on off, on off. You've got anti wheelie mode off. Yes, please. But only in track conditions where it is safe and obviously not on the road. Launch control, off launch control. Well, now I'm tempted. Then you've got leave track if you want to exit out of that. But if you go back from track, now you can see that the rider mode is stuck in track. So it's telling me that it's on and you can switch that little thing down there, which is slip, which I believe tweaks your traction control setting while you're on the track on the fly. Depends where you are, what your riding conditions are, but that's quite nice that you can just do that just by jabbing this up and down on the fly. And then if you go back into the menu, select track, leave track, obviously then you're back to rain, street and sport. And I will leave it on street. Then you've got motorcycles, so you can turn the traction control on or off. ABS mode is on road. You can obviously set that to supermoto just like that. And then you've got the quick shifter on or off and shift light if you want. Fairly nice, fairly basic, nothing too hard to wrap your head around, but something probably quite nice to play with if you are gonna take this on the track a few times. And then of course, we have to hear what it sounds like. And actually I would say that again, for a stock bike, stock exhaust, this is pretty loud in a lovely, lovely way. a nice note you can tell by how loud I'm having to speak how loud the exhaust is it's got a real nice kind of rasp and flare to it it gets a lot of hate for the look of the exhaust but I don't think you can hate the way it sounds pluses and minuses what do I like about it and what don't I like I like the engine, it's super strong, super progressive, throttle response is nice, it's 
really lightweight as well and it's really sharp i do like the handling although it doesn't necessarily suit the way that i generally ride myself i like the gearbox as well which is something that i haven't been able to say on all of the ktms or husqvarna's that i've tried recently this one will actually find neutral i know it's impressive i appreciate the fuel range i think it's a 14 litre tank on this thing but with all of the ktms that i've tried recently they've actually been quite impressive as far as the uh, fuel economy of the machine which is a small point but when it performs as good as this you sort of think it's going to be a thirsty little devil and bleed you dry but actually they've been all right fit and finish it's pretty good as well pretty solidly made uh, i'd say maybe rather than it being sort of quality it just feels solidly built switch gear is nice to the touch it feels lasting it's easy to get a handle on when you've got your big thick gloves on as well and then you've got little things like the mirrors. The mirrors feel pretty quality as well. There's no real shake to them either. Everything just feels well screwed together. It is, please excuse the terminology, but a tight little package. Don't excuse it, that was horrible. I apologize. And then we've got faults. This is obviously quite a new bike. It's hard to tell whether or not it's gonna develop something further down the line, but dare I say, I trust it. There's nothing glaringly obvious as far as I can see that's gonna go pop or bang on it. Don't just take my word for that, obviously, after they've been out a little while, maybe do your own research and just double check that. And if you have one and something goes bang on you, please do let us know in the comments. I'm sure other people, as well as myself, will find that useful. But if you are looking to buy one yourself, they start at £10,399 as of September 2020. This one with all the extras on it is £11,055. And if I'm being honest, as far as the extra tricks, toys, rideability that I'm getting for that money, personally, I would probably save my money and go for the 790, which at the moment is retailing at 7,499 pounds. And that is a big deal. If like me, you don't feel like you're gonna be stretching that suspension to its limit or outbreaking yourself, maybe save your money and go for the 790. I know it's a little bit less powerful, but honestly, chances are you're not really going to feel it thank you very much for watching as always like if you liked it leave a comment if you want to and subscribe if you're new i'll see you in the next video Ta -ra.